on, you know, whether he'll run for mayor, you know, not this year, maybe four years from now. But in doing this issue every year, we look at all the projects he's been a part of, the things he's pushing for, and I'm sure you'll hear about some of them from him directly. Without further ado, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful Bronx Museum of the Arts, where, where great things are happening, and stay tuned because even greater things are gonna happen right here. Let's give them a strong round of applause for hosting us. Thank you. One of our great Bronx institutions. Uh, John, I just want to thank you and, and Tom Allen and Gerson Borero and Nick Powell and your whole team for continuing to not only do this and actually making this a, a tradition now. Uh, this has happened annually and, and I believe that it's necessary and I'll speak of that in a minute. But I also want to uh, thank uh, Alex and Lisa from your team. Uh, are they here tonight? Uh, Alex and Lisa here tonight? Huh? Alex is? Thank you, Alex. Let's give Alex a strong round of applause. The reason is that city and state also hosted uh, us during Bronx Week, and we had a uh, stickball contest. Uh, and Alex was there with Lisa, and it was a way for us to showcase our personality, something that is very much of our fabric here in the Boogie Down Bronx. Uh, and so we wanted to thank you for that. And, and, and thank you for tonight and this issue that is dedicated to our beautiful borough. Uh, last year, I was able to speak of all of the progress that we've all made collectively. Uh, and it's amazing how everyone in this room and thousands more who are not here, how we are all working in our perhaps silos at times, in our own little areas of expertise, but it's all coming together, whether we are working as elected officials, and I see my good friend Rafael Salamanca, who's here, the city council member. Let's... Uh, Councilwoman Vanessa Gibson, as chairwoman of the Public Safety Committee, was here. The Bronx is the safest Bronx that the world has seen in 50 years, but we have someone who's tough on the criminal but is also fair in our historic district attorney, the first black woman elected as district attorney in the state of New York, Darcel Clark. Thank you. Whether you are in the healthcare business or if you run a healthcare institution, whether you're an educator, uh, whether you are working to promote the Bronx outside of our borders, like uh, uh, Olga Luz Tirado from our Bronx Tourism Council with the Bronx Over Economic <laughs> Development Corporation. Whether you're creating housing, whether you're an advocate who's always bending the ear, like Micah Johnson does uh, with the elected officials. Uh, bending the ear of the elected officials, uh, just making sure that the Bronx is, is being built in a better way and for Bronx sites. Uh, I think that finally we are getting that recognition. And, and not only uh, are we getting a recognition, it's not fluff, ladies and gentlemen, it's real. The numbers don't lie. Uh, my Ling Sing Throne, the president of the BOEDC. Let's give my Ling Sing Throne a strong round of applause. She works every single day with so many of you. And, and from, just from last year, the last 12 months since we did this last event, we saw an increase in, in the amount of fund, uh, money, private dollars that's been invested in our borough. Over 3.2 billion private dollars in the last 12 months over 14 million square feet of economic development just in the last year. Fresh Direct, fresh direct. that's fine. <laughs> Go Fresh Direct, I support Fresh Direct. <laughs> Even though some of you may not. But that's the beauty of our borough. We, 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 we agree on some things and we don't agree on others. <laughs> that's who we are. When you look at over 5,000 units of housing 
And we agree on what type of housing sometimes, but we do it everything from very low income to home ownership. We are not monolithic. We don't pretend to be. We are a borough of 1.4 million people, where 41% of those who live here were born in another country. We are a borough where we celebrate our immigrant population. And while the rest of the country is, is having this ugly debate where they question someone who's different, someone who's an immigrant, where there's discrepancies on how do we uh, engage with those who may not be uh, from the same background as we are. Here in the Bronx, we are a paradigm of that eclectic unity that I believe needs to uh, continue to be praised and, 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 um, and mo modeled, uh, is a model for the rest of the country. I'm so proud of being the borough president. I'm so proud that even when um, some of our schools don't get the resources that they need, that principals and teachers are digging into their own pocket and trying to do the very best to afford our kids a better opportunity. I'm so proud of the fact that now when developers come to us, they do so in a way where it's respectful. I, you know, I always say, feed me my favorite dish, but you better feed it to me with some love. If you feed me my favorite dish with some attitude, I don't want it. And so when, uh, when, when developers come, now they're coming with a little bit of love. Now they understand that, uh, that we ought to be respected, that we ought to make sure that Bronxites are uh, getting those jobs and that the apartments look in, uh, aesthetically in a way that is pleasing, that is comfortable, that is dignified. When you look at our cultural institutions, uh, tourism is up 14%. And so each and every single one of you and those who have been highlighted in this edition, whether you're in the non-for-profit sector, healthcare, education, and you know what? If you are in those sectors and you were not acknowledged, keep working, because eventually city and state will acknowledge you. <laughs> I don't want to belabor this. I just want to touch on the last piece, which is your front page. You guys think we disagree. Some of us may disagree on development projects. <laughs> Try to be in at the dinner table with that cowboy hat over there. <laughs> My father and I differ on many things. But my father no one can doubt his commitment to the Bronx. No one can doubt his commitment to his constituents. No one can doubt his record in first the city council uh, 17 years ago, 16 years ago, then 15 years in the New York State Senate. Uh, I thought that this piece uh, was well-rounded. I felt this piece was fair-minded. I thought this piece uh, was able to highlight the many complexities that comes with being a member of the Diaz family. <laughs> I think he's gonna do a great job. I know he's gonna do a great job uh, if the voters will have him in the city council. And um, I just wanted to say personally, as a son, as a son, um, I'm proud to see when El, ba El Vaquero de Bayamón is featured in the front page. Now, let me just end by saying this. Why the cowboy hat? Many of you don't know the reason why. My father is from Bayamón, Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, you yeah. In Puerto Rico, they have different pueblos. They have towns, and every town has a team, and they have, they like, they have intramural sports, and every town has a mascot. And so in Spanish, a cowboy is a vaquero. And the Bayamón, their mascot is the cowboy, el vaquero. So el vaquero de Bayamón. So when those of us who are a little bit younger and we use phrases and terminology like keep it real and represent and never forget where you come from, my old man wears that hat in homage to his hometown, Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Hence, he's the cowboy, el vaquero de Bayamón. So, Papi, I'm proud of you.
I'm going to continue to fight with you when we disagree. You got to remember that you are Ruben Diaz Sr., but I'm the senior elected official in the family. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all, more importantly, for everything that you all do on a, sing on a daily basis to make a better Bronx. God bless you and God bless the Bronx. Thank you, Donald.